All right, quick little update. It's the weekend. Again, your front brakes are done. Front suspension's done. Steering system's done. Your front brakes are bled. Uh, let's see. Charging system's hooked up. All the uh, uh, positive cable, negative cable. Let's see. Like I said, the brakes, the uh, uh, brake pedals hooked up, master joints hooked up. The only thing I'm having problems with is I got a Saginaw, which is a GM style pump, and this factory Ford fitting here, power steering fitting. I can't find the right adapter to make it work. I had one screwed into it, and it was so rigged up, I just took it back off. I got to try to figure out what adapter to use. They sell all kinds of different adapters, but. They don't sell the exact one I need. This is what I came up with. And it'll work. It'll screw in there. But I'm just scared it would leak. So it's 5 8, it's five eight it's 18 thread going into the pump. But it's also supposed to have like this little, I don't know, like a little brass shank deal on it with a with like a rubber O-ring. It's supposed to go up in the pump. And that's what seals it. So I was afraid that just a Teflon tape and this flare right here, inverted flare, was not going to work. This part right here fits the four line perfect, but this part right here is too small. It wouldn't screw up in the, it wouldn't screw up in the pump. And I had one in the pump that screwed into the pump that had the right fitting for the pump side, but then this side right here was too small. It wouldn't screw up on it, so I was just screwed either way I went. So I gotta get online tonight and see if I can find the right fitting. If not, then I may wind up just screwing the, uh, the back out of this Universal. This is like a. Just an aftermarket Saginaw pump you'd buy. And it's just got a flare in it. Regular old flare. And I can get a fitting for that easy. So I may just screw this out. And then screw the other one out and see if they're the same. And if they are, I may just do that. I hate doing that, but I may do that. Whew, this place is junked up. I've got to stop and just clean. Spend a good day cleaning. I didn't clean them bolts up. I didn't go around in with a wire brush, clean them up, paint them. I'm getting to the point where I'm getting tired of cleaning stuff. Oh, let's see. I got the... I haven't put the floor pan in yet. I hate putting floor pans in. I'm procrastinating. I know. I know. Ugh. If I had little half floor pans, I'd probably just put the little halves in. The back ain't all that bad. It's just the front right there. Right there and right there. Well, I ended up getting the steering wheel on. This is a Falcon steering wheel. What it was is the splines is just a little bit boogered up. All I had to do is... Put the steering wheel on. I put this socket in the middle. I tapped it with a hammer. Tapped right on. And I wiggled it and it popped right back off. So, steering wheel will go on and off now. Uh, what do I got to do? Okay. The original wiring that was in this car was really bad butchered up. The wire that goes to the neutral safety switch, it's melted. From the where it plugs up outside the car all the way through the harness is melted all the way up to the switch so you turn your key on like over on start and you got power it comes from your switch goes through this wire then it goes down to your neutral safety switch and then loops back around like if it's in neutral you'll have two contacts that'll make contact and it'll go through the contacts then out to your solenoid and that's why it actually cranks the car well as you can see there ain't no way that's going to crank the car so i got to jerk all this harness out i'm going to cut this wire out of the harness check all the other wires and just replace that one wire that's in the harness all right i got the harness rebuilt oh. this is the wires that i had to replace so this one goes to your which will be like your kicker wire that kicks your, your starter over. Start your engine. This will be your ignition side. This here goes to the positive side of the battery. This other one goes to the positive side of the battery. The alternator harness, I just taped back inside the harness because it's not going to get used because i got one wire alternator. And then there's this green wire right here that I left kind of pigtailed off to the side. It might have to go all the way up and get a pigtail and go to the positive side. I don't know. I'm going to try it without it first. Because I think it's part of the deluxe. I'm thinking maybe it's part of the deluxe wiring on this car. Which I deleted all, all of it I thought. Except for 
maybe this wire right here. It's green with a black stripe. Most of the time they're black with a green stripe. Well, that's kind of what's got me thrown off. I fixed all the ends. Uh, soldered and heat shrinked. And then I black taped them all up. Horn. There's the other horn. It's ready to go in. Like a brand new harness. <clears throat> Well, I just rebuilt the heater box. This is made out of three heater boxes. I didn't have any of the little clips that hose the boxes together, so I had to make those little clips by memory on what they look like. And then the heater box, the fiberglass is busted. That's where the clips are supposed to be. So I take a cutoff wheel and cut some new grooves in it so the clips would snap in place. Found a piece of rubber that's still real good and squishy. Uh, hand me down defroster portion of it cleaned it up marketplace rebuild I put a new heater core in it from Morales I took some uh, of that foam like you'd put around uh, like your air conditioners in your house like if you get it Lowe's little thin strip it's got sticky tape on one side I put it on the inside around where the heater core sits stuck it in there make sure all my little flaps work you defrost here's your cold and hot and this right here is to shut off the uh, you can open this little door close that little door and then fresh air from the cow can come through this you can open this little door up and it'll force air into your cabin or your car cool you down on the passenger side it's the nut cooler <laughs> but She's rebuilt. She's ready to go back in the car. Once I get that in, I'll be able to hook up the uh, heater hoses. And then everything to do with this engine will be done. Except for this. This is still a dilemma. I found the. I think I found the adapter I need. It's like 20 bucks online, man. I'm on a budget. $20 is a lot of money. Whew, Lordy mercy. But as you can see, I got my wires all hooked up here. I, when I replaced about 20 inches of the harness, I made sure that all the right colors went back into it. Brown, dark red, a little bit lighter color red. This should have been dark red with a blue stripe. Of course, I ain't had no way of putting a blue stripe on it. And yellow, the other red, and of course, the big thick black wire. So, put a battery in it, hit the key, it should, it should whip over. If I had some gas in it, it would whip over and start, but I don't want to burn my pump up because of this fitting. So I'm going to stab that heater box in, get my heater core lines hooked up, and then go on to the next task. All right, guys. The moment has arrived. Well, not really because I need to tie one of these wires into my coil, but I'm just too anxious to see if this power steering is going to work. I know the motor will run. I mean, it ran before without that carburetor on it. So as long as that carburetor is good. I filled the bow up with gas. The gas tank don't have no gas in it. I just went ahead and filled that bow all the way up until it was running out the vent. And as long as I put the plug wires back in the right spot. Uh, let's see, I just put, I put, put this bow on. As long as I put the plug wires back in the right spot, it should, in the world is that? It should fire up. I mean, it was running in the other car. Let's see if we can eat sparkage. Oh, yeah, we got sparkage. So, let's see. I should just crank it up out here instead of with the key. Let's see. I need me a screwdriver. There's my screwdriver right there. Let's see here. Come on, baby. <laughs> hey! Looks like it was just turned off. I just popped it off the fluid. You should suck it down. Now that the power steering works. Oh, it's working. It's like butter. It ain't making no whining noises. Oh, there it goes. It must be sucking the fluid down. Getting low fluid. This old girl fired right up. It's just running 
just like it was in the other car. I guess we lost on oh she's running out of gas. Ran out of gas. Alright, so this is our linkage. It goes to our transmission. And oh it was too short. Oh so we're going to try to correct that. Well, So I'll we'll put some marks. I needed to add about an inch. So I found this old sleeve. It's actually off of like sway bar links. So I'm going to put the sleeve on it. And then put this up in the sleeve. And then I'm going to weld it all solid. So that should work, right? I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know. No. Well, we aren't sure gonna try anyway. Oh. I don't know where my stuff is went. The little thing to hold this phone is gone. It's gone, gone, gone. Oh, I built a shifter. Took three shifters and built one. <laughs> Finally found one that actually has some halfway decent bushings in it. You have marks on it though. The lines. I do need to at least line my lines up. Wait. Mosquitoes are trying to carry me off. Seam up in the middle too. Weak point. Gas and I'm gonna say decades. Judge 
and by the way, everybody look. Yep, I'm gonna that guy. Tire steering works good. Tire brakes work good. And you steer with one pinky, one finger. That's the dummy gauge is hooked up right now. We're driving this baby tomorrow. She's ready to go. All I gotta do is put the wheels on. A lot of linkage is hooked up. We're gonna try this. Maybe it'll move, I don't know. Be the first time trying it anyway. Ain't got no latches on the door. Hope it don't take off rolling down the hill. Put this other car behind me. Maybe it'll go. Come on, baby. Oh, I'm gonna cut on this fan. I worked below a radiator hose. Fan just cut it. Like the engine just settled. Alright, let's try that again. I cut about three eighths of an inch off of every fan blade on the very tip. I burnt my lower, my lower radiator hose. It's almost cut all the way through, so I'll have to place that. I'm gonna call my hand free. Imagine that. That's what these tests are for. <laughs> oh, my. They good?
That right there was fun, boys. A couple weekends ago, this thing was an old rusty turd of a coop. Now it's a running and driving fastback. Can't get no better than that. What's the next day? And imagine what? It's raining. Again. Don't get me wrong, I like the rain. But when it rains hard, it floods my shop. So we got a little bit done yesterday. It's the day after. <clears throat> Went for a little test drive and a little shakedown. It done pretty good. So uh, after my little shakedown run, I put the deck lid on. And the uh, uh, end caps on, of course, they don't fit worth a duty. Uh, of course, I got the side scoops on. Started fitting the hood. I had a new hood from El Paso, and I wound up giving it to one of my buddies. Well, not giving it to him, sold it to him. Because it's just too thin and too, it didn't weigh nothing. The uh, scoop would pop in and out, and I just, I've done been there, done that, don't want to fool with it. If I had a metal hood, I'd put the metal hood on it, but I, I sold it last month. So, this was the front nose that I picked up off Marketplace. Well, I just made a once in a lifetime score on Facebook Marketplace. $500, guys. Got this body kit that's in the back of my truck. For 500 bucks originally they just had the uh the side skirts listed on the ad for 200 bucks i get down there and they've got the whole kit um they had been let's see two of the fender flares have been cut on but nothing like they're not hurt or nothing but and somebody had actually mounted the side scoops to a car before and then popped them back off but I mean, that ain't nothing. I can grind the back side and remount them. $500. Can't beat that with a stick. Thank you, Marketplace. Uh, was it yesterday? Day four yesterday? And uh, someone had cut it. There and there. And I know why they cut it. It was because they couldn't get it to fit the fenders like it's supposed to. And they never fit anyway. See, it's sticking up. Sticking out. But these are so thick, you get them fitting kind of close, and then you just grind it down to make it flush with the fender. And where it don't fit, like right here, see that don't line up? We should just grind all this down and wipe it with green fiberglass filler, and just remake your gap. I grind it all the top out of this to get my hood gap, get my hood a clearance underneath it, because I don't want it rubbing the paint off the top of my kit when it's painted. But in order to get this thing to fit as good as it's fitting, which ain't too good. This one fits pretty good. Sticking out a little bit right here. Still doesn't line up right here. Had a ground top out of this side too. But in order to get it to fit as good as it's fitting, I had to put a relief cut in it right here. Because the body kit 
was cocked like this and it wouldn't allow nothing to bolt up so once I got where they cut it put back together I figured out what the problem was I just put a little relief cut in it and it bolted right up so now it's dry I gotta take the take the nose back off take these screws out and turn it up edgeways and scuff this up in here best I can you really can't get in there real good but I can hand sand it with like some 80 grit now I'm gonna go in there and lay fiberglass on the inside too all right as you can see, I have added some fiberglass. I ground down into the hood, all the way over to the center point, and oh, zoom out. Clamp me some cardboard on the bottom side just to hold the the bottom of the hood. I want it to stay the same. So, and then I just kept packing packing glass in there, bailing it up. You can still see where the edge of the hood was. As you can see this don't line up with this so now I just go into the underside and mark it and trim it off clean all this up add a little grain filler should be good to go after I fill in this big ginormous gap all right so got it I put uh, the green fiberglass reinforced filler on the end then I roughed it in real quick and I went back over it with some body filler. As you can see, if you look down it, now we are parallel this and this. When you look down it, we are both parallel with each other. Before, it was way off. You can see, parallel. Kind of an illusion. Now all I got to do is grind this down, fill in this big gap with some fiberglass filler, and then we'll have a nice pretty gap. Here's something else that I bet a lot of people don't ever pay no attention to. Oh. Okay, from the top of this light to the top of this, let's take a measurement. Uh, let's see, it's, it's two and... Uh, it's two and three eighths down. Okay, let's do this side. On the top edge. This side is an inch and an inch and I can't really tell. See, three quarters or seven eighths. It's an inch and seven eighths. 